Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. Of course, as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. In today's part 13, we will talk about open, closed and compact sets. First, please recall that for any point X on the number line, we have the epsilon neighborhoods. They are defined for positive epsilons as intervals. Namely, we start at x minus epsilon and go to x plus epsilon. And then it's simply called the epsilon neighborhood of x. And a common notation one uses is b with index epsilon of x. The important thing you should remember here is that all the points that are close to x are inside this b epsilon x. And this closeness is just quantified with this value epsilon which gives us the maximal distance the points can have from x. However, if you don't want or don't need to quantify the closeness, there is another notion one uses. Namely, we simply call it a neighborhood of x. And this could be any subset of the real numbers, as long as we find a b epsilon x inside. Or in other words, we need to find a positive number epsilon, such that the epsilon neighborhood of x, b epsilon x, is a subset of m. So you see, the notion of neighborhood of x is very general, but the crucial thing is that we find a normal epsilon neighborhood of x inside of it. Okay, maybe we should start with a simple example. If you have the number line in mind, we immediately get a lot of subsets. For example, the interval that starts with the number minus 2 and goes to the number 2. This set is a neighborhood of the point x is equal to 0. However, also it's a neighborhood of the point x is equal to 1. The only important thing here is that we find an epsilon, it does not matter how large it is. It only needs to be positive. So maybe here in the second case, we have to choose a smaller epsilon than before. However, still, the only thing we need is that we find such an epsilon. And we do not find such a number if the point x is given by 2. Of course, 2 is an element of this set, but an epsilon neighborhood around it lies not in the set. No matter how small the epsilon is, we always find a part of the epsilon neighborhood that lies outside. In summary, here we have an example of a set that is a neighborhood of some elements of it, but for others it's not. And now, a nice set that is for all its members a neighborhood, we call an open set. So these nice sets will get a special name. Later we will see it's much better to work with open sets than just with sets. Okay, now any subset of the real numbers is called open, or more precisely, open in R, if for each point x in M, M is a neighborhood of this point. Hence, such boundary points like this one are not in the set M itself. Equivalently for the definition, you could avoid the notion neighborhood and just use the epsilon neighborhoods. So this means for all x in M, there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that b epsilon x is a subset of M. Of course, we can also visualize that on the number line. So for example here, these four parts could be our set M. And then you can just pick any x from this set. And then in the case that m is open, you find a small interval around this point that is completely inside the set m. Hence in this picture, these boundary points here can't be a part of the set m. Otherwise it would not be an open set. Now on the other hand, a set that contains all these possible boundary points gets also a special name. Such a set A we call closed, or more concretely, closed in R. The definition just reads that the complement of A, AC, is an open set. For example, the interval from before is a closed set, because the complement outside is an open set. Now one important thing you should really note here is that open is not the opposite of closed. For example, a set could be neither open nor closed. Or the other way around, it could be open and closed at the same time. Okay, maybe that's a good time to look at some examples. Let's start with the simple subsets you can imagine. Namely the empty set and R itself. Of course they are both open because the condition we have here for openness is immediately fulfilled. 
For example, for the empty set, we don't have any problem because there are no elements in the set at all. And on the other hand, for the real numbers, we don't have any problem because all intervals are subsets of the real number line. However, now we also know they are both closed. Simply because the empty set is the complement of the real numbers and vice versa. Okay, the next example we've already discussed, an interval of this form is closed but not open. Therefore, we often call such intervals closed intervals. Of course, then the next example would be an open interval. So that's good to know, when we use the parentheses here, we get an open set. However, in this case, it's not a closed set, which you can prove. Okay, and in the last example here, I want to mix the brackets. And in this case, we don't have any of the two properties. It's neither open nor closed. Okay, so you see, these two definitions here are not so complicated at all. But please keep in mind, a subset of the real numbers could be much more complicated than just an interval. In order to deal with such sets, the next fact is very helpful. It gives us a criterion to check closeness with the help of sequences. Namely, a set A is closed if and only if, for all convergent sequences AN, with the property that all the sequence members lie inside a set A, we have that the limit lies also in A. To put this in other words, it's not possible to leave the set with sequences from the inside. Also here, it might be helpful to look at an example. Here on the number line, let's take the interval that starts with 0 and ends with 2. Here the number 2 lies inside the interval, but 0 does not. Hence, we are not able to leave the interval from the inside to the right. For example, we could take such a sequence, which is convergent, but then it would have the limit 2. It's not possible to get the limit outside. However, on the left hand side, it's indeed possible. For example, we could take the sequence 1 over n. It's a convergent sequence where all the sequence members lie inside A. However, the limit here is 0, which is not an element of A. Hence the conclusion is, this set is not closed. Okay, now you should know the definition of open sets and closed sets. Therefore you are ready for the next definition about compact sets. It's a little bit more complicated, but because you already know sequences, we can use them to describe the definition. So we call a subset of the real numbers A compact, if for all sequences A n, again, all the members should lie inside the set A, we find a convergent subsequence where the limit lies in A. So you should see this is different to the property of closeness from before. Indeed, here you could say a compact set enforces clustering inside it. Each sequence inside the set needs to have a cluster point, an accumulation value, inside the set. Now, if you compare this definition to the property of a closed set from before with the sequences, you see this here requires much more. Hence, you can already keep in mind a compact set is necessarily closed. However, not the other way around. Maybe you immediately find a set that is closed by our definition, but not compact with this definition. Okay, then in the next video, I will show you how we can describe these compact sets in simpler terms. This is called the heine borel theorem. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.